good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel and today is the day that I've been longing for for uh, over a year now because today we are finally getting our hardware 3.0 upgrade and in the meantime I'm also going to do the MCU 2 upgrade because uh, my MCU is uh, kind of dying and uh, it's it's sluggish as hell and just not workable so I decided to just pay for the upgrade because it's a paying upgrade unfortunately it's an expensive upgrade but I will get so much more in return now um, I'm on my way to the service center about 20 minutes left to drive and then uh, somewhere today they couldn't really tell me how long it was going to take because it is the very first time that the service center in Antwerp is performing this procedure so it's going to be following line by line in the book probably and then afterwards I'm going to sit down with the engineer and uh, go over what exactly has been done now they're not going to tell me that they switched pin 21 for pin 12 or that they had to uh, put on another connector or whatever but uh, I'm going to get the big lines of what exactly has transpired on my car today so yeah really excited and uh, looking forward to testing with hardware 3 in the future so I've just exited the service center and uh, the car is now calibrating to uh, get me the uh, autopilot functionality now I've done the calibration on uh, the previous version as well and that took about 10 kilometers. Now I'm already at 60% uh, or something so it shouldn't take too long to get the calibration done. So yeah, while the camera is calibrating and uh, before I started this of course I played around with the new MCU and it's amazing how much faster this feels. It feels up to date again so I'm really happy that I did the upgrade even though it's uh, a very expensive one but uh, yeah it makes driving the car an older car a lot more bearable and it feels like I'm back up to date which uh, I kind of am so now I'm really curious to see how long the calibration will take already at 70% right now so it shouldn't take too long and then uh, we can test the software update again so I do have the same version currently installed on the car as what I tested autopilot 2.0 with which is the 36.3.1 update so yeah I'm curious to see if there is any difference in behavior once the calibration is finished so now that I've driven the car and everything has been calibrated uh, let me tell you exactly what has transpired on my car so both screens have been replaced so with the MCU 2 replacement the instrument cluster is also being replaced um, so that means that now just as with any new car if you do the double scroll wheel reset then both screens are reset at the same time before with autopilot 2 and MCU 1 uh, you had a separate reset for the instrument cluster or the binnacle display because that was a separate computer so now it's one computer and the uh, binnacle display or the instrument cluster is just a display and that's it um, so those two have been replaced and of course behind the glove box you have the FSD computer now which is uh, more or less a plug and play system uh, the only thing they had to change is that they had to uh, get an input to output wire on that uh, FSD computer for the uh, back camera or the rear camera. The rear camera on MCU1 is apparently directly connected to the MCU and now it needs to go through the uh, autopilot computer or the FSD computer. Um, the SIM card has also uh, been changed or the place of the SIM card has also been changed so that was underneath the uh, MCU which was relatively easy 
to switch out yourself, which was especially useful for countries where Tesla was not uh, active. But now with the FSD computer, the chip is actually inside that computer and it's a lot harder uh, to actually replace that SIM card if you would need to for one reason or another. Oh yeah, uh, one important thing is that the uh, fender cameras, they are not being replaced. So none of the cameras are actually being replaced, which means that as you can see here, that the uh, fender cameras are displaying a black and white image instead of a color image like it does on newer cars. Now, is that a problem? I don't know. I don't see a use case for actually upgrading them yet at this point. So I'll see uh, what happens. But um, yeah, definitely those uh, cameras are black and white instead of uh, more color on the newer cars. And looking at the images from those uh, fender cameras, I noticed that the right side was actually filming the body a little bit, but the left side is not filming that at all. So um, yeah, send a message to the service center and uh, hopefully it's uh, an alignment thing that they, do, they can do remotely. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that is something that needs to be fixed. The LTE connection is still an LTE connection. It's not 5G or anything. It's, it's still plain LTE. And uh, yeah, that's all that's changed. It took about uh, three, three and a half hours. Everything went rather well, uh, especially for a first attempt uh, for this service center. So they were happy with the results and now uh, they can install more uh, of these and uh, probably get quicker and quicker in the actual installs. So right now I'm happy with the results. As I mentioned, the MCU is a lot more snappier and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to work with again. And I feel that I don't really have a new car, but I have a renewed car and I can't wait to put it to the test. So as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and make sure you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.